everybody! Welcome to the newest episode of Queen's Court, where we are watching Monday Night Raw from beginning in 1993 to today. And today we're talking about July 1993, the month before SummerSlam. But before we get into it, I'm the Tribal Queen Bree. Alongside me, as always, we got Mike Duplessis and we got Husky Rhodes. And how's it going, guys? Good. Doing sure. good. Get doing good uh exhausted from my uh shoot life Bro working these working these fucking doors for these shows and then immediately turn into a dance club when you're pushing 40 sucks <laughs> diak <laughs> when everybody else is younger than you too <laughs> whatever dude i'm paid to be there it's fine but other than that i'm doing great um, no yeah i've just been chilling watching people's recaps about crown jewel yeah oh yeah yeah that, that was fun yeah, it was surprising, surprising, because uh, I know he says no cheap plugs, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, shout out to Will Gray. But him and myself and Bree were on there for a bit, and Self Bet and Jack's Bow all did a watch along for Crown Jewel. And I forget who said it. I think it may have been John that was like, are these shows like must watch now? Yeah. Because it was actually like a really good pay per view. It was really good. Get the return of Kyrie Sane. That was nuts. I was not expecting that. And, and according to reports, they're trying to bring in two more from overseas to join this little group. We had mentioned in that thing that Asuka's sitting there doing what? Yeah. Doing nothing. And they're, they're trying to bring put the Ray back. back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did see that. I think you posted that in the group chat. Yeah, I posted that in the group chat. Yeah, that's uh, that would be very interesting if they go about that. Yes, mm -hmm. because but Ray they, did not get her, get her fair chance. Oh yeah, yeah, they no. did not. They did nothing with like, her. Not they barely used her in NXT. I I think I saw her wrestle like twice in NXT. Yeah. Like because she got hired. Role. She got hired right before Bruce and Vince took over NXT. And Bruce and Vince were like, nah, we're gonna fire you. Well, like they made such a big deal, like they had her sitting in the audience next I think next to Stephanie yeah. or Paul. Yeah. And like they just made this big deal about signing mm -hmm. her and then what like, nothing. Yeah. Literally did nothing yeah, with they, it. They were supposed to do huge things. I've read mm -hmm. and then yeah, Vince and Bruce Pritchard took over. Yeah. And, yeah, fuck things up like usual. Yeah. Stupid brother loves. <sighs> mm. Doctor Tom Pritchard, I'd take a bullet for Bruce Pritchard. I'd want to throw in front of a bus. But, Facts. But, but, but anyway, we're not here talking about current current affairs. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna take uh, it back thirty years. Pop in the wayback machine. What happened on the fourth of July, nineteen ninety three? Hi. I that was the one thing I've missed, but the beginning I kind of caught the recap of it during the first episode, mm -hmm. where they pretty much tried to take Yoko down, and I was excited because they had a Detroit Lions on there trying to take him down and had, had, you know. uh, had Bill Fralick <laughs> and the Lions. Bill Fralick Fralick couldn't do it, but you know he was he was there. So I'm like, uh, the oh, best yes. part about that is the fleets. Because all those pro athletes are not your top tier pro athletes. So they're like, you guys can, we can miss you for a day. Yeah. Well, that's, then, a th that's a thing. Yeah. Like most, most wrestlers that played football, like had like a professional run or whatever, are usually those guys. Except yeah. for, except for Mongo. Cause Mongo were on, won a fucking Super Bowl. And, yeah. And, and Wahoo. Oh yeah, Wahoo! Yeah, I mean, fucking Mongo is on arguably one of the greatest teams in NFL history, the '85 yeah. Bears. Yeah, yeah. And, but yeah, the pro athletes they got for this thing, thing third tier. I had, I had never heard. I had never heard of a <laughs> single one of these one of these dudes, like at all. I only have them. Be, I only heard of a, a few of them because I collect sports cards, so I have oh, some of these guys' cards just by luck. Oh, but that's yeah, I was like, oh, these are all like, these are the players that are like, oh, you can miss 
practice for a day or you can miss yeah. a game. We don't care. Yeah, we'll we'll still we'll you're still pay playing. you for this one. You're doing you're, you got to do this wrestling shit. We'll still pay you, but you're going you're going to get a double payday cuz I think Vince is going to give you 50 bucks. <laughs> but um, yeah. They had like 50 people from like they had like NFL players, NBA players, NHL players, and a bunch of wrestlers and there was 50 people. Yeah, cuz they yeah. had um in the recap, they had like Scott Steiner, Tatanka, and Crush. Rick Steiner gets in and there. And too. Randy. They had Randy too. Yeah, Rick yeah. Steiner actually gets in there too for a little bit and tries to do it. Yeah. And yeah, Savage was number 50. I popped when I saw Ray- Randy out there trying to do it. Yeah, he, he got in there. He couldn't do it. Oh, at one point, Fuji calls a timeout. And Yoko just starts shoveling rice into his mouth. That was, I was like, slightly racist. I was like, guys, dude. It's a little much. I understand leaning into a character, but dude, don't floor it on everything about the character, please. Because that was, that made me feel a little, uh, a little uneasy. Husky, it gets worse in October, November, and you know that. Oh, I know. I know. It's just a, I, I'm warming Brie up to this because it's going to it's going to suck. <laughs> like, I'm already angry. I'm going to be throwing things. Oh, oh no, you point. are you are you are going to cuss us out at some point, I am. even though even though this show idea was yours in the beginning. <laughs> yeah. You will. <laughs> Why did so you agree to do this? this out is crazy. <laughs> Why did you agree to let us do that? Well, technically, it's Boss Man. It, oh it's yeah, a, it is. It is Boss yeah. Man's uh, Boss idea. Man. Why'd you put us up to this? Because he wants to see us all squirm. The fact that but. she hasn't cussed us out yet is crazy. Oh, it's coming though. <laughs> It'll happen. Wait till we get to the Attitude Era. It's coming. <laughs> it's coming. Yeah. But after Yo, after Savage doesn't uh, get to slam Yoko. Todd Pettengill says, there's one more competitor, and everybody kind of turns around and starts freaking out. You see a helicopter landing. Mm -hmm. Who could this be? Is it somebody coming over from WCW? Or is this some random new person? Nope, it is fucking Hulk Hogan 2.0 in Lex Luger. The Mr. America Lex Luger. I have heard, I don't know how true this is, but I have heard that this character is how Vince McMahon actually sees himself. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's quoted that. He saw himself as Mr. America Lex Luger and Ted DiBiase. Yeah. So take Ted DiBiase and put him on all the steroids. Just take Ted DiBiase, put him on all the steroids, and make him oddly patriotic. And that's yeah, how no. Vince McMahon actually sees himself. Yeah, no, that his his kids <laughs> have been weird quoted. Bastard. His kids have been quoted saying that. God, you fucking weird kids. bastard. But Lex Luger's coming to the ring. People are going batshit crazy. Bobby Heenan standing there, and he's like, "Hey, Lex," and he's like, "Fuck you, nerd!" Just shoves him against, shoved him against Poor the Bobby. truck. Bobby's like, "Oh, oh," adjusting his suit, like, "What the fuck?" He gets in the ring, wearing the weirdest American flag sweater, turtle. Or it's, it had a fucking collar on it, like a fucking polo shirt, but it was like a sweater. What the hell was that? I want to know who styled him. No. Oh, dude. 90s was a weird time. Not Randy's, not Randy, Randy stylist. No, well, no, no. That's because that dude dressed pimps. Yeah, a man, a man that is uh, <laughs> dressing pimps <laughs> is not on Lex Luger's radar <laughs> at all. I don't know. He he looks like he he looks like the Gap threw up on him or something. I don't know, but. Yeah. He Thank comes you. out there. Oh, that is early two thousands old navy. Yes. True. Yes. Very much so. But he comes out to the ring and he's like, 
He's like, something about, uh, you say there's something wrong with America, there's nothing wrong with America, and the crowd fucking loses their shit. And then all of a sudden, he just leans into the Asian hate. He's like, yeah. He, what he calls it? Overstuffed sushi eating bastard. <laughs> like, I'm like, oh my god. Larry, shut the fuck up. <laughs> and he said, he's like, you two are a disgrace. You're a cancer to wrestling. Blah, blah, blah. And then finally, the challenge gets accepted. Luger's gone on record and said, they didn't originally want to do this angle because they were afraid Luger was going to hurt Yoko because of how big he is. Yeah. But as, as he's, as Luger says, and I quote, so please do not get offended by this. This is a direct quote. Those Island boys really know how to wrestle and make everything you do look good because Yoko basically told him, just get a wide stance, brother. I got you. Yeah. So, hits him with the forearm. He's kind of stumbling around. Luger gets in the corner. Yoko comes running at him. Ooh, whoa! Dives headbutt into the corner. He just stumbles right into him. And Luger picks that big bastard up Ooh, and throws him to the ground. Did that. That's 568 oh. pounds. And Yoko just... He did all the work on that. I mean, Luger even admits it. Lu Yoko did yeah. all the work on that. He's like, just keep a wide uh, fucking base and I got you. And it's crazy that we are doing this segment and talking about this with Lex Luger just returning to the WWE. If you have not known, he was on the YouTube show The Bump this week. Oh, yeah, I saw that. For the first oh, time yeah. in the WWE since 1995. Wow. That's what is, did they say what he's doing? Or is he just like a Legends contract? They, they invited him on there. I guess him and Vince had, they kind of, they had, they need to have a conversation because the Luger didn't end on the best terms. Yeah. And yeah, Triple H and, not Vince and Luger, but Triple H and Luger had a conversation and they kind of mended fences. Yeah. Yeah, Paul out here making making friends and yeah, Paul being Paul being Triple H is good at that. He did the same thing with Bruno, fixing Vince's uh, fuck ups. Yeah, he did. The, I mean, yeah, exactly. Like Mike said, he did the exact same thing with Bruno. He brought Bruno back because Bruno had Bruno. nothing to do with the WWE since the late eighties. And he fixed that Cause fence because he, he hated Vince Junior for what he was doing to the business. Yeah. So, but yeah, crazy. Triple H is a good person. Yeah, Paul. Yeah, we like you, Paul. You're good in my book, Paul. Please, give me yeah, a job. It's just funny that we're talking about this with Luger just making his first WWE yeah. appearance since 95. I didn't even I didn't even realize it, that it even happened. So I'm going to have to yeah. look that up. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's like Tuesday or Wednesday's episode of The Bomb. Okay, cool. I'll yeah. Go yeah, it's on their YouTube. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... So Luger not only wins the respect of America, he got a free pickup truck. He got a night a brand new 1993 boss. Chevrolet Silverado with a bunch of pro USA decals blasted all over the fucking thing. And then the Lux Express too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. this was a redneck thing in the world. So this whole gimmick is a uh, shitty political campaign. But instead of running for president, it's please help us get Lex Luger over. <laughs> please, we spent so much money on this fucking guy. <laughs> there, uh, it's so cringy, uh, dude. Is this have, when he drops the mirror? Like when he doesn't bring the mirror to the ring? Yeah, anymore? he's no, he's no yeah, longer. He's, he's no longer returned. So my issue with this, and I have the same issue with the Scott Hall situation in, in this these episodes too. There's no story arc on them turning babyface. It's just just all of a sudden one episode. Oh, you're babyface now. Well, Razor kind of does. Yeah, with the Ted DiBiase thing, but that still just comes out of nowhere. 
It is random, yes, but at least it has something of an origin point instead of just hard reset, no questions asked. Like, at least there's like but, a, an origin. But even point. with that one episode, he's heel when he faces Sean Wallman and he's babyface earlier in the day when he has that promo of Ted DiBiase. Yeah, I know. It's weird. I, I don't yeah, understand. That's what I'm saying. There's no like, okay, what are we doing here? Yeah, they haven't, they haven't quite figured it out yet. But yeah, um, let's see. Yeah. But yeah, this is just a giant ploy for them to replace Hogan. Yeah. And then after the replay, it cuts to the commentary table. And Vince, like, I want to thank all the competitors that came out and attempted this. And then Savage just runs in. I want to see something. <laughs> Lex Luger, we are so damn proud of you. And Bobby Heenan. Mind you, he says, pr he spells proud, P R E E O U D. <laughs> and Bobby Heenan. <laughs> That was the body slammer to round the world. So around is A R E E O U N D. <laughs> Randy Savage makes you up have the spelling. script or something? or something. I literally, I literally sat there and watched it like three times so I could get everything that he said. <laughs> oh, with captions I, on? No, I wrote it down. Oh, I just, wrote that's. It. I was dying the first time I, he said it. I just fucking fell apart laughing. So I was like, all right, hold on. What the fuck? Let me ruin this. God. Oh, I'm like, and that's when I realized Randy Savage adds ease to words that they don't need. Yeah. No. And I, no, I fucking love that man for that. What do you mean by that? Oh, God. In the first match, we had a one two one two three kid versus Be Blake Beverly. The the one that isn't Von Wagner's dad. Yeah. Oh, the I, other one is his dad. The other one is Von yeah. Wagner's dad. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Maybe this that's is. why I don't like them. <laughs> <laughs> this guy but I found out wrestled in WCW in like two thousand. Yeah. He had a few Mike Enos. spot matches. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I found that out randomly just from like rewatching some 2000 WCW, like randomly for some reason. I love watching 2000 WCW. And then the dude comes to the ring and I'm like, that guy looks like a shitty Steve Austin. Wait, oh my God, that's Blake Beverly. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is happening? <laughs> and then finally, so the again, this match is very famous. Gear. This match is very famous for a very great reason. If you watch this episode and you notice something has gone from Shawn Walton's face. Oh, yeah. <laughs> his, his eyebrows are completely shot, gone, thanks to a one Mr. Perfect. Fuck you, Kurt. <laughs> why do why'd you so, do that, Mr. Dickhead. Perfect? Why? Bree, uh, the story is... <laughs> Three days beforehand, they took pictures for action figures. Mm. And it was going to be Sean Waldman's very first action figure in the WWF. And Sean and Kurt have a long-term relationship with being in the Midwest. Or, yeah, in the Midwest. In Minnesota. So they know each other very well. So during this long day, Sean took a nap. So Kurt Hennig, the ripster that he is, he is known as the greatest ripster in the WWF, along with Owen Hart, shaved his eyebrows. You fucking dickhead. <laughs> it's the greatest rip story I oh my God. ever heard. He learned from Fuji. He learned yeah. from Mr. Fuji, because Mr. Fuji is like God-tier river. Yeah. But between her Hennig and Owen Hart, those are my two favorite when it comes oh, yeah. to stories. They rib motherfuckers so bad. Owen's got a good one. Owen's got Owen's a great one, especially against his own brother. Cool. Yeah, fucking. But yeah, hilarious. so yeah, Kurt Hennig <laughs> shaved Sean Wallman's eyebrows. 
<laughs> Just right, right before his first action figure. Yeah. Yeah, so that's but that's this was so a great fuck. Yeah. Oh yeah, the match itself was awesome. Like mm-hmm. the kid, the kid Sean goes fucking is crazy. So he had, so he had, Sean is so ahead of his time. Yeah, dude, he's yeah, he's literally in 1993. He's like what Commander is now, or like yeah, the fucking Lucha Brothers, like just doing yeah. some insane shit at the time. Like his, uh, when he shoots him off the ropes and like the flying, jumping spin kick thing, where he just like throws like both legs at him, like flying like spin clothesline with his legs. That looks so fucking good. He did it the best out of anybody, in my opinion. Yes. But to go back to Sam and Yoko during this match, they're talking about the situation with Yoko and. Savage is an asshole. He called Yoko a blimp. Yeah, I was like, dude, come on, Randy. Randy. You know better than this, Randy. <laughs> like, I know what they're trying to pull with the whole, like, okay, he's a big fat man, and he's, but damn, a blimp is savage. Dude, there are like four times on this show where they are just like fat shaming the fuck out of these people. And I'm like, come on, man. Yeah. Like, I want to mute uh, it, but at the same time, I want to hear what they're saying. Oh, dude, there is one point There is one point in one of the later episodes. I literally had to walk out of the room. It wasn't even a fat joke thing, but there's just one one part in the show that I just had to fucking walk out of the room. We'll, we'll get there, but I can... Let's see. What is it? Starts out with a handful of mullet and a punch to the grill. Then, the, then fucking... Sean goes batshit in the beginning of this, dude. He's just going fucking off the walls. Dude. Blake Beverly, that suplex in the corner, where he just suplexes yes. him onto the top yes. turnbuckle. I'm like, oh, what the fuck? Yeah. That shit was batshit crazy. I, I put suplex on the top turnbuckle. Fucking owl. <laughs> like, <laughs> he like straight bends in half backwards, dude. It's fucked up. Yeah. Uh- yeah, Sean should have been in a wheelchair. <laughs> Dude, at one point, Blake Beverly fucking gorilla presses Sean and just yeets him over the top rope. <laughs> and Bobby, and Bobby says, those spots. And Bobby says he threw him so hard he knocked his eyebrows off. <laughs> Bobby, it's like you motherfucker. <laughs> I guarantee you Sean went back, watched the replay of this, and heard his commentary. He's probably like, God damn it. <laughs> I can't say anything to Mr. Heenan, but fuck. <laughs> uh, then like the the end of this the end of this match or like no, it wasn't actually the end of this match, but um it's like Beverly starts whipping his ass and then he goes up to the second second uh rope. Misses the diving splash off the top or like the double X and or whatever. When kid gets up and does that like crazy, like sideways somersault senton thing to the, that's outside. what, yeah, that's Vince, crazy shit. Vince loses his fucking mind. Just, oh my God, look at him. What am I over? That's one thing you will notice, Bree. If you haven't noticed this already is that once, a, like once a match, Vince McMahon, when he's doing commentary, will say the phrase, what a maneuver. To either something yeah, yeah. like crazy or something he's has no idea what the name of it is. Or to cover up a kind of botched spot. Mm-hmm. He'll just say, what a maneuver. So now you will hear it all the time. <laughs> yeah. In every episode now. Until I'll, be Vince like, leaves I'll be like, botch. I'll be like, that. It's like, hold on. It's like, yeah, you hear it and you just like, go back. Wait, wait, wait. Oh no, that's why it was cool. All right, all right. <laughs> Let's see the oh, the counter that Blake Beverly hits because when they're doing the spot where he's like, he does the one leapfrog and then he tries to leapfrog again, but he doesn't turn around, and Blake Beverly catches yes. him into that back suplex was so sick. It's like I need more of that shit in my current. Yeah, the, again, the Beverly is underrated. Oh yeah. yeah. Then the the finish of the match, 
Sean's on the ground. Blake Beverly tries to <laughs> splash off the top. He misses. He eats shit. He's down. And then Sean hits the, uh, I don't know if he's named this leg drop. I, I have named it the Minnesota Jam. Because everybody does a sitting leg drop as like the, because like uh, Bobby Eaton had the Alabama Jam, which is the exact same yeah. thing. Beautiful fucking leg drop on Sean. The, it was fucking cool. It like He looks like he doesn't get like that high in the air off the ropes, but he's covering some distance with that thing. Because he's going like two thirds of the way across the ring. It's fucking awesome. And then we get the debut promo. This is interesting. Of men on a mission. I was I I love this promo. I was a little intrigued. God damn! Big shouts to men on a mission. Uh, also, As fuck you, Vince, for calling them mom. Yeah, that's the only thing that pisses me off of this this whole section (laughs) is Kim calling a mom over and over is making me mad. Just say the name. It's like a tribe called Quest. You say the whole thing. Men on a mission. Don't fucking call a mom. It's weird. But yes, this is uh... so for the people who don't know men on a mission, Mabel, Oscar and Mo. They are actually from the Carolinas, and they were actually, this is where the USWA, during the King Lawler's uh, promotion, was like the territory or from like the developmental system for WWF at this point. Right. And they were a major tag team in the late 80s, early 90s for him as the Harlem Knights. Mm. I don't know what it is. With tag teams in the early nineties, well, two tag teams in the early nineties, being from the south and having the name Harlem, because if this team from the Carolinas, and then you have that team that's from Texas. Yeah, that goes to WCW. Yeah, Booker T's like I've never been to New York in my life. What the fuck? <laughs> But yeah, so yeah, but this is the debut of uh, a future Viscera, aka Big Daddy V, who uh, has had a storied career in in WWE, aka uh, hurting Yoko, breaking Diesel's back. Taker. Apparently. Oh yeah, he hurt Taker too. Oh. He fucked Taker's face up. The same injury that Brian Danielson just got, Maple did that to take her. Ooh. But worse. I fucked him and up bad. I recently found out that uh, Mo runs his own wrestling promotion. Oh, really? Called Soar in uh, Southern Texas. Hmm. Oh, I think I may have seen a flyer for them online yeah. somewhere. So. And maybe one of yeah, the him and his wife. Facebook groups I'm in. Oh, yeah. that's awesome. Him and his, yeah, yeah, shout out to Soar. But I love these promos. As a fan of really bad early nineties rap, this definitely gives like tag team vibes. Yeah. yeah. So you so you like like fucking like what's well, what was the dude in uh what was the dude in WCW? Uh PN News. Yeah, PN News, yeah. Rap, Rap Master PN News. Anything that sounds like Take Team or like DJ Easy Rock and Rob Bass. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love it. It so pops good. me every time. Yeah. <laughs> so we so we go from the hip hop promo to random black metal vocals. What's going on? Oh, it's Luna Vashon and Bam Bam Bigelow. Yep. You just hear and you're just like, what the fuck is happening? Oh, it's Luna. Hey, Luna. <laughs> How you doing? I love this duo, but I wish I do they, too. Bam Bam did more, more of the talking. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. at a point, I'm like, come on, man. <laughs> you're, darling, your throat's got to hurt. Trust me, as somebody, as somebody that fronted a metal band before, doing it for that long at a point without stopping fucking hurts after a while. <laughs> so, I've never heard her not talk 
talk like this. So I don't know what her regular voice sounds like. There is a, there's, that's a, a regular, shoot, that's a there's a shoot interview that her and Gangrel do. I think it's an RF video one where she talks. I mean, she she sounds kind of haggard because she was yeah, for yeah, twenty yeah, fucking so years. She just sounds like an old chain smoker. Yeah, but like, no, she has a she has but again, a normal it's the 80s and 90s, So I would not be shocked if he, she was a chain smoker. Oh, she oh, dude, she was absolutely. Huh. Yeah. But um, but yeah, then we get that. It was just a quick like. There's the beast from the east, or whatever the fuck. And then it cuts into Bam Bam Bigelow and Jumpin' Joey Mags. This guy's been a what job a squash guy squash forever. Squash. It was like, yeah. literally, he threw him around in one, two, three. <laughs> this was a fucking <laughs> mugging, dude. <laughs> like a squash of all squashing. This is literally like what would happen if, like... <laughs> if, if, like, in real life, if Bam Bam found out that Joey Mags was, like, hitting on his wife... This is what would happen. Because <laughs> this was yeah. about 45 seconds of just ass beating. Yeah. I was like, I literally, like, I went to fill this up when the match started. I forgot to hit pause. I was like, yeah, fuck it. I'll rewind it. I came back and there was another segment on. I was like, what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> what happened? What I miss? <laughs> yeah, this was just, he just throws him in the corner, splashes him like three times, and that's it. Yeah, it was not. I didn't really put much down. Like, okay, I just hey, that was a squash. Threw him around and pinned him. Yeah, I I just put this was a mugging. He just splashes mags in the corner twice and pins him. Pretty sure this was under a minute. I didn't time it, but I'm pretty sure it was under a minute. It had to have been about like oh yeah seconds max. The match three is Samu versus Taker. No Paul Bearer. Mm-hmm. No Paul Bearer in this. He's still and this is the first the time we get a pitch black intro. Yeah, yeah. This is the debut of the blackout intro, and then him walking up the walking up the stairs and bringing the lights up. That was fucking yeah. cool. It was a really sick shot. The way that they shot, like, did that like overhead shot from the balcony. Looking down to the yes. halfway. That was fucking cool. I, I like that. <laughs> Bobby, before the match starts, you just hear, get out from under there. And it cuts back to the commentary table. And Bobby Heenan is climbing out from underneath the table. What are you doing hiding under the table? I dropped my pen. <laughs> Again, that entrance is scary. <laughs> It is, dude. Because there was kids thing. screaming, too. I wrote down that I heard kids yeah. screaming during his entrance. Oh, yeah. People were freaking out during his entrance. It was Between hilarious. him and Kane's entrance. Yeah. Because, like, when that, like, came out, was there any other entrance like that? No. No. Like the no. Yeah. no. That was, no, the end. Not. he's a first of first. Yeah. 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 One of the few things that Jim Cornette and I agree on, it's the greatest, uh, greatest character in professional wrestling in the past 40 years. Yeah. Yeah. At one point, when Taker's coming into the ring, it's right behind the head shrinkers. <laughs> Alpha turns around and gets freaked out by the camera because <laughs> I don't think he realizes the cameraman's right, like directly behind him. He just turns around, ah! and just runs away. <laughs> I fucking died, dude. <laughs> Thank God I was home alone when I watched that one because I was like, ah! I, I, I like audibly laughed like hard. <laughs> Uh, so it starts out, Taker is no selling everything that Samu's given him. Just fucking classic Taker. Loved it, loved it, loved it. <laughs> and then as the match is going on, uh, Bobby Heenan says, According to my sources, I found I found where Paul Bearer is. And Vince is like, where? Where is he? Paul Bearer is in Mobile, Alabama, robbing graves. Just you're just giving away the man's shoot hometown. Yeah, I mean, Paul Bear and what he Mobile, does Alabama. in his personal life yeah. and his shoot job. Yeah, it's not. That's a, th- that's a thing about Paul Bear. 
spree. Paul Bear is a licensed was a licensed mortician. Oh wow! Yeah, that's how. Yeah. that's how he got the job. Because yeah. they, they just found him. Well, he was working with no. uh, he was working with Rick Rude. Mm. Um, and yeah. In the Indies, he was working with Rick Rude. World Rick Rude got signed to, uh, yeah, in World Class down yeah. in Texas, and he got signed to WWE. And basically, Luger or uh, Rick Rude was like, "Here, here's Vince McMahon's personal phone number." So he calls him, sets up a meeting, gives him a resume, and he goes, "He's reading it over, and he goes, huh, you're a real mortician." And he's like, "Yes." He's like, he looks at J.J. Dillon, looks at Pat Patterson. And they all go nuts. They start freaking out. And he's like, oh, God, they're going to fucking, they're going to kick me out of here. And then basically J.J. Dillon was like, look, we have this Undertaker character. He needs a Paul Bear. You're a licensed mortician. Makes perfect sense. It was a family sense. business. And just, he, he became one of the greatest managers of all time. My watching Undertaker do a drop kick is dude that crazy. fucked me up. I've never seen Taker throw a drop kick. I've seen him do. There's the like a few of these early matches. matches. He mm. does it once in a while, but yeah, it's a rare yeah, it's thing. It's like yeah, I've seen him do the flying clothesline. I've seen him do old school all day long. Drop kick. That's a rarity. Yeah, I fucking I popped that. I was just like, drop kick? Who do you think you are, Randy Orton? Like, what the fuck, man? <laughs> one spot, one spot that I absolutely loved is when Samu's got Taker down in the in the ring. He climbs up to do the diving headbutt, and Taker does the sit up before he hits him. I fucking popped. I was like, yes, that's fucking so sick looking. But then choke slam and a vicious ass tombstone. Yeah. I I think Samu's head may have made some contact. Cause that shit looked nasty. He's got a big head, and it, it probably did. Yeah, yeah. Samu got a noggin on him, so he probably he probably did hit a little bit, but that was a pretty, uh, pretty good match there. Like the storytelling that they had with the urn not being there and Samu getting a yeah. lot of offense in, being like yeah, it made Taker look weaker for the first time. Made made him look like he's a normal competitor Human. and not this like yeah. supernatural phenom, so to speak. Yeah. Next, we get a Yoko interview with Vince, and Vince is just here to stir up some shit. He said, Fuji, how does it feel to hear the USA chance? Just giving them shit. Yeah, just rap yeah. the gate. It's like, come on, dog. I get it. I, I get it. It's an evil like, foreign heel. I get it, but come on, Like, man. at what point is it? That, and, and it's enough. Like, Right. Oh, yeah, again, a few months. It ends in 94. We got yeah, yeah, we got we got a we got a while with this shit. Yeah, because the more forwards come in and we see a video package of one of them. God, we oh, think. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to I can't wait to see Bree's reaction to what happens with that fucking guy. Wait, uh, what guy? Ludwig. His Borga. name's Ludwig Borga. Oh, yeah, yeah, I wrote. Oh yeah, because they showed gonna... that in like the third or the last episode. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's the third episode. You're gonna hate yeah. him. Oh, yeah. We're just gonna let you know now. You're gonna hate him. There's a very good reason why you're gonna hate him. Mm. <laughs> okay. But yeah, then he's like, he says, uh, "Luger did." Fuji says, "Luger did not slam my Yokozuna. That was a hip toss." <laughs> It doesn't count. So great. So great. <laughs> Classic heel shit. It's like, no, that didn't count. Fuck you. Bullshit. I call bullshit. 
And then Fuji says, My Yokozuna challenges any wrestler in the back for the world title. And what wouldn't you Crush. know it? Crush Bra comes out. Just big and juicy. Coming up, walks up, and he accepts the, t- the challenge. And then next week we get Fuji or Yoko and Crush for the world title. And then we had our first SummerSlam advertisement too. Ah, yes. Oh. Yes. Footage so hot we can't show it until August. And I said this before. God, that man, is it's at the palace and rest in peace, the palace. It's now mm. demolished. Yeah. It's no longer. But. It's like any time I want to torture myself and watch WrestleMania 8, it's like, ah, oh, I miss the Hoosier Dome. I feel that way about the King Dome up here. Yeah. Oh, word. Just like, uh, was it the WrestleMania 3? That was the Pontiac Silver Dome? Is that the Silver Dome? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's no longer too. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because they're at Ford Field now, right? Yeah. I was going to say, Ford is nice, though. Nice, though. Yeah, yeah, four, yeah, four yeah, because that's where I was. Yeah, for SummerSlam, yeah, it's nice. Yeah, like Let's see. Then match four, we get Mister Perfect versus Brian Costello. Perfect being a dickhead to this fucking ring girl, just putting his gum on her glasses. Oh, it was like, so what the actual yeah. fuck, dude? So disrespectful. <laughs> That's the meanest shit I've ever You're seen. You're Mr. Perfect, not Mr. Asshole. That's the meanest shit I've ever seen. <laughs> he had to like have known her like off screen. It was like, you know what? Oh, I just want to yeah. mess with her. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah probably she had to be a friend. Time, like, hey, can I do this? Can I put gum on your glasses? <laughs> it's like, I guarantee you, he probably set up some deal. Was like, hey, I want her to be the ring girl. She's probably like a family friend or some yeah. shit. And it's like, hey, look, yeah. we're just going to fuck with each other all the time. Like one week I'm going to put my gum in her mouth and she's going to fucking love it. Next week I'm going to fucking stretch my gum out and wrap them around her Is mouth. it the same lady? <laughs> it's the same one. Yeah, it's the same one. Oh, shit. I didn't even yeah. notice that. That's yeah, hilarious. It's the same woman, which makes it even funnier. Oh, yeah. No, she's got to be a family friend. Like, okay, we're just going to screw oh, with yeah. each other. Dude, and and the whole time, dude, she's dying laughing. So clearly, that she's was in my part. I was yeah. like, oh. yeah, like, yeah, she's, she's laughing her ass off. Of yeah, she's trip. she's a hundred percent into it. Mm-hmm. She's pro- she probably just works in the office. She, she's like she does. She helps fucking. She helps the think book travel and shit. <laughs> <laughs> Let me give you an extra payday and fuck with her head. And this dude gets fucking ran through. Those they were chops. Fucking- these See, chops, chops were like- at the beginning of this match. The chops at the beginning made my chest hurt so much. Yeah, lit him I like, up. I need ice. Swift and blinding violence. <laughs> I was like, good god, fucking insane. And I put. I- well, that was quick. I yeah. love how. I love how he turns to the hard cam and he says, now I'm about to show you big blacks. The whole crowd like coming in with him with it. I was like, that's fucking cool. That was, that's so sick. Hits it and one, two, three, and that ends episode one. That was good. Yeah. They really got to put the great matches. I don't their main events for these early Raws are just weird. Yeah. They put they put what would be the equivalent of well, we can't even really say an opening match now because there's some some shows nowadays they open up with just fucking heat out the gate. I'd say this is probably I would say mid mid two thousands raw. Mid two thousands raw opener. Yeah, we at the end of the show. You, they haven't learned this, the fact of you need to hold the best matches to the end so you keep viewership throughout the whole They're show. not even opening raw matches. These are like velocity matches or like heat matches. Yeah, these are these are curtain jerkers for main event. Yeah. Like a show that I forgot existed until I went to Raw and sat through a taping of it. 
I was like, oh wait, this is still a thing. <laughs> Made it that's still a thing? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I saw a sick On match. where? Peacock. On what? Peacock. God. I saw, I actually saw at the Raw I went to, I saw a pretty sick Apollo Crews, uh, JD McDonough match. It actually went kind of fucking nuts. I forget, I forget Apollo Crews is still part of the company. Dude, I did too. I'm not even going to front. <laughs> Poor guy. He, he deserves so much more. But we kick off with, they're opening the show with a world title match. With Crush and Yoko. And Yoko, was he starting to turn heel because he ripped, he was like throwing the flowers. Oh, he was already, he was, he was already heel. He's just now super pissed that he got fucking embarrassed by Lex Luger. Yeah. And so he's taking like, it out he started on camera. Ripping him up. I'm like, what is going on? I was Wait, like, Yoko? Yeah, yeah Yoko. Oh. Yeah. yeah, I was like, like he's heel, he's big heel. Yeah, he he was all yeah he was always a heel from the beginning. He was just now now he's pissed off heel, mm-hmm. and everybody that gets in his way now until he gets his hands on Lex Luger is gonna suffer the wrath. Oh, and, yeah. and yeah, the ending of this match is fucked. But mm. <laughs> I put Yoko destroying the flowers is a classic heel. As Crush comes out, Vince asks. Can Crush want ask if Crush can do the job? Well, since you since you write this shit, you know Crush is about to get jobbed out. Why are you why are you fucking doing that, brother? But Bobby Bobby the My favorite, actually called him coconut or a pineapple breath. Oh yeah, who would, who did Bobby call pineapple breath? Was it Crush. was it Randy or Crush? Crush. It was Crush because okay. he's from yeah, he Hawaii. Crush pineapple breath. I, I, I'm like, is he talking to Randy like that? Yeah. No. <laughs> Called Crush yeah. pineapple breath because he's from Hawaii and stereotypes is Bobby's thing. Yeah. One one actually like really good piece of commentary was this back and forth between Bobby and Savage where Bobby asked Randy on the USS Intrepid, Crush got one of one of Yoko's legs off the ground. Does this rattle Yoko's mind? And Savage says, I think he's frazzled because Luger proved that a body slam is possible. So maybe even Crush could become world champion. So I was like, I liked that. I like that. It so it's that puts that seed of doubt into Yoko that like shit, anything can happen. And it lets the viewers know like, yo, anything can happen in this. Like keep watching. Yeah. This was just two big men just tossing each other around. Dude, one thing, one thing I thought that was kind of fucked up and like the crazy, like patriotic shit. While Yoko's doing his warm up gig, the entire crowd is singing the national anthem. I was yeah. like, "What the yeah. fuck?" Man. And they probably told the uh, the crowd to do that, like before the show. Oh yeah, they definitely. put a plant. They put a plant in there to like to start, start singing it, mm-hmm. and then and the, the crowd went with it. By the by, like the last four bars of that song that whole fucking place is singing it i'm just like oh come on guys so the fact that at the end of this match when they have the breakup they don't bring out wrestlers they bring out a bunch of jobbers to just get themselves killed oh yeah well, except for Tatanka, they brought he came out. Tatanka yeah. comes out first, yeah, but then. But then like, Yoko just. Then laid they the bring yeah. out. Then they bring the job squad out, and they just start getting start getting their fucking <laughs> lunch eaten. At one, at one point, <laughs> like, at one point during the match, I fucking laughed out loud for this. Crush starts getting the upper hand on Yoko, and then he runs off the ropes and he gets countered with the scoop slam. Vince literally hit the ooh oh. And I fucking died. I was like, ah! <laughs> he fucking said the thing. That <laughs> was hilarious. But then, yeah, so pretty good back and forth, to be honest. Um, yeah. Like, Yoko misses the elbow drop. Crush gets up, runs, hits him with the big boot, and Yoko spills out to the the floor. The crowd fucking, you would have you would have thought Hogan returned. That pop mm-hmm. was fucking massive for that spot. 
And Bobby at one point, they say, commentary just fat shames the fuck out of Yoko for the next five minutes. Bobby says, just drop all that weight awkward. on his back, break his neck, and get it over with. I'm like, God damn. God. <laughs> fuck you, man. Like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> And then he get finally gets to his feet. Crush finally fights back. He's going to jump off the top rope. Here comes Fuji with that fucking flag stick. Bah, smacks him in the back of the head. Drops him off. Yoko throws him into the ring. Pulls him into the corner. Bonsai drop. Safe as fuck bonsai drop. One, two, three. Yoko wins. But it ain't over. Yoko goes back up for a second one. Does it like four times. Yeah, hits him fucking three more times after the oh. bell. Oh. And then Tatanka's like, fuck you, runs out here. He takes a he takes a chop. He fucking gets shit canned to the outside. Then as soon as Tatanka comes to the ground, here comes the fucking job squad. Job like every jobber who didn't get picked for a match that day I was like, you know what? We'll Pay you an extra they're ten dollars. Like, they're like, here's an extra hundred bucks. You want to get laid yeah. out by Yoko? Not a hundred. That is an extra ten. Because <laughs> because they're only getting twenty five bucks a shot. Yeah. <laughs> at this point, they're in the first season. They they haven't they haven't like renegotiated their deals yet. They're like, here, yeah. we'll upgrade you from food from McDonald's to Olive Garden yeah, if we'll you want to get laid out by Yoko. We'll once a once a month, we'll buy you boys a steak. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, all of those dudes get their ass. Star slice from the local pizza joint. Yeah, they had. Yeah, they went. They went down to the. They went down to the fucking pizza shop on the corner and bought a whole pie, and was like, "You boys fucking fight over this fucking thing." So, With the Joe's then, pizza. <laughs> and then fucking Savage gets in the ring. Finally, Savage has had enough. He gets in the ring, and Vince is like. He's not contracted to be in the ring. Randy, get out of there. Get out of there. And he fucking runs up, grabs Crush by the feet, drags him out. The rest of the fucking job squad get Crush out of the ring. And goes to commercial. Bobby Heenan's putting the fucking blame on Luger the entire time. Yeah, he time. kept blame, blaming There's Andrew all Yoko on Lux. Small. As Savage, as Savage is wielding a fucking chair trying to keep Yoko away from everybody. Not even a folding no, chair. It's like a it's... full blown heavy chair. Dude, that's one. That's that's one of those fucking chairs. If you ever go to a wedding reception, yeah, it's like one of them fucking chairs. Like, yeah, that was. Like, it's not that, a typical that, that chair a... you'd sit in a wrestling show. Yeah, that's that is not a no. chair that you use to fucking swing upon somebody. That's that a chair you use where you're in a church staff meeting. Right, exactly. Yeah, like literally every church or like uh, conference center I've ever been to has those fucking chairs in it. Mm -hmm. Goes to commercial, comes back from commercial, shows Crush getting put on the stretcher, taken out to the back, and and Bobby says that Luger. Is going to be in much worse shape when Yoko gets his hands on him finally. And they just kind of fucking go back and forth, blah, 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 yelling at each other. Then the next match, oh, God. Head Shrinkers. Right, yeah, versus... This match pissed me off. <laughs> the Head Shrinkers versus Aaron Ferguson and young PJ Walker. PJ Walker nearly fucking dies in this match. Yeah. It's... Oh, he dies. But this doesn't have the respect of calling these wrestlers by the right names. Yeah, he he's calling the PJ names Walker. Up. This whole match, he calls PJ Ferguson, and then he calls Ferguson PJ, and it's mm -hmm. just so disrespectful. He didn't give a fuck about these job guys. <laughs> Which is fucked up, because one of them ended up working for him for a few years. <laughs> For a long for a long while, apparently, if people uh, believe the rumor that ECW was getting paid, getting you know funded by Vince McMahon the entire time. Facts, and I am one of those people. <laughs> right. <laughs> I just put, wow, they'll just put any two job guys together for this, and then, uh that fucking, I don't know if 
they were trying to just pancake him and PJ thought it was a back body drop or they were trying to do a back body drop and just shot him up instead of like up and back like that because fuck I was just like oh no oh 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 god and then he just lays there fucking dead I'm pretty sure he was knocked out because he's just not moving <laughs> or like, no, no I think PJ was out cold for a few seconds yeah. <laughs> Fatu was just like fucking get him Get him over there. Get him out of here, please. You see the ref like grab his hand, like, hey, squeeze my hand if you're not if you're fucking to prove you're not paralyzed yeah. yet. But Paralyze. all right, I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> and then fucking <laughs> while while PJ Walker is knocked unconscious, Sam Wu and Fatu are just punching each other in the face. <laughs> They're just in the corner. Just to give him time. Yeah, give him time. But they yeah. but they played it off of there's not enough competition, so they're fighting each other. <laughs> yeah, it's just Samu and Fatu just basically doing like a Japanese strong style slap fight, just yeah. <laughs> smacking the shit out of each other. It's it's honestly the most Samoan thing ever. If you hung out with any Samoans, it, it is the most Samoan thing in the world. <laughs> Bro, punch me in the face. <laughs> Word. <laughs> they like the fight. <laughs> All right, Oos. Oh, man. This was brutal. It, it almost got uncomfortable to watch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. At points, dude. Yeah, I was just like, God. Just the it's like, stop, dude. They're already dead. Like, why? And Rikishi I don't know like, how after dead. this match, PJ... He was like, I want to work for this company. I don't know. Yeah. They probably felt bad for him and like, hey, man, look, we'll not put you with the head shrinkers anymore, but we'll give you a contract. <laughs> Please don't sue us. <laughs> We're really broke right now. <laughs> yeah. But, God, yeah. Rikishi's fucking splash that he does in this is fucking insane because of his size and how much ground he covers when he does that it's like watching jacob fatu now he's, <coughs> yeah they're arguably about the same size mm-hmm. but that dude's yeah doing at this point fuck, yeah. fuck wild shit like crazy and then we get a promo for marty sean three that's going to be happening next week. Because you've got yeah. the match where he wins, where Marty wins, the house show where he drops it back to Sean, and now this is the, the rubber match for that. Yeah. Spoilers, that match was way too fucking good to be on free TV. Yeah. Oh, that, that match is so <laughs> no. Jesus, God. And then next, we get our boy Tatanka. Justice for Tatanka. And the Brooklyn <laughs> Brawler. Steve Lombardi is back on our screen. So I looked it up. I have no notes for this because it was just an ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was crazy. I looked it up. I looked up uh, the professional wrestling career of one Steve Lombardi. This man worked for the WWE from 1983 to 2016. Wow. Insane. Just being a fucking with, crazy job guy. Yeah. And with some of the wildest gimmicks ever. I have the I have his Wikipedia up here. And let's see. He went he went under the Boston Brawler, the Brooklyn Brawler, the Broad Street Brawler. Uh, he was Kim Chi, who was with Kamala in the beginning. Yeah. yeah. Abe Knuckleball Schwartz. The base. Ninety-five player. is a weird year. Ninety-five is a very 94. weird year. Ninety-four, ninety-five. The baseball player. Weird, strange. He was also MVP. I don't remember that. I think Antonio Banks might need to sit down with this man. Yeah. And also the Black Knight. 
which I think that's the Survivor Series thing. Yeah, with, with Jerry and with Jerry yeah, Jerry and Sean or Jerry and Brett. Yeah, that's right. And the Hart family. So yeah, yeah so the Boston, the Boston Brawler. That was a oh. one night gimmick when they were John Cena was at the top of like him being Hercules in like oh five oh six, and they yeah, were in yeah. New York. And since John was the baby face, he wore a Yankee jersey. Yeah, and then he came out in a fucking yeah. Red Sox jersey or some shit, a Red Sox t-shirt. Yeah, that was all fucked was, up. Yeah, he did the same thing in Philly too. Yeah. Yeah, and then see, Savage comes back and says that Crush is like real fucked up. He's having like trouble breathing, and all this stuff. And then Bobby, you go call Luger and you tell him about this and this is his fault and then fucking Randy don't switch the heat don't switch the heat now Bobby <laughs> this uh, preview or snake preak this is the start of what's going to be a great heel turn for Crush yes it's actually it's actually some of his best WWE work yes My eyes. And then, and then Bobby during this said he should be WWF president. Yeah. And then at one point, so great. Savage, so great. Savage finally fucking has enough. He's, he's like, all right, me and you, Bobby Heaton, next week in the ring. And he's like, I, I can't do it next week. It's my cat's birthday. <laughs> <laughs> fucking shit heel bastard. <laughs> fucking hilarious. It was so fucking funny. Then yeah, Tatanka just whoops up on Steve Lombardi, hits him with a fallaway slam, and one, two, three. What they call a fallaway slam, which is actually just a Samoan drop. Yeah. The fallaway slam is the razor gimmick. Yes. Pick, pick. You, you got to pick the names, Vince. Like, you already <laughs> use it. You already use it for another fucking move. You can't name the same. You can't move name two moves the same thing, Vince. <laughs> Get your shit together, bud. You run a wrestling company. How dare you? Steroids are getting to his head probably at this point. And then and then this part kind of fucking got under my skin. It cuts to some interesting comments from these four kids outside that oh, literally say God. the same scripted thing. Fuck you, brother. I couldn't remember if that was this episode or the next episode, but yeah, that was so garbage. It's literally, except for the one kid that fucking rambles on too goddamn much, they just, it's copy-paste the same thing. I think Luger should get a shot at the title. And then a bunch of pro-USA comments. I guarantee, I guarantee they probably said a bunch of them. There was probably a bunch of people that said Luger, but I guarantee you there was a handful of them that'd be like, "Bam, bam, should be world champion." Fuck you! Like, my God, I was literally just like, I just, I kept plus ten in it. I was like, God damn it, fuck, fuck off, kids. <laughs> that also needs to be quipped. <laughs> Fuck off, down the kids. <laughs> fuck off, kids. Fuck off. I'm a bitter old fuck. Get out of my fucking yard. Next, we get Tony DeVito and Mr. Hughes. And Vince says, Tony DeVito is first cousins with for with a uh, former wrestler, Basil DeVito. And, and Savage goes, yeah, I think he owes me money. <laughs> I actually did. I meant to look that up if that was even a fact. <laughs> yeah, I was going to. I was like, is that a real guy or is just Vince being a fucking shithead? Yeah, I don't know. And then some. And then all of a sudden, look down the rampway, and there's a hand. There's a. Whoa. What? What up? Basil DeVito. As a member of the WWE staff, they just chose the name out of nowhere. Ah. Uh, mm. Vince is a douche. <laughs> Basil DeVito is the first member was the uh, the when they did the XFL the first time. 
he co-presidented that, and he was on the WWE board of directors. Oh. Okay. Vince is just a douche. <laughs> he's just he's just trying to get everybody in the fucking office noticed. Oh, that's. I was like, because I've heard that name before. But yeah, no, this is the guy who yeah he helped start the XFL. Oh ah, God. got you, got you. Okay, okay. That's so, fucking great. So you see a a guy come down with an all black wreath that you would see at a funeral mm-hmm. with a rest in peace banner and a note that says Mr. Hughes. So Hughes sees this and he gets fucking hot. He's screaming shit about Taker. Vince is like, I couldn't make out the comments of Mr. Hughes. He clearly, you could clearly hear every word the fuck guy says. He's like, Taker, this is you, boy. And he starts fucking up Tony DeVito. Gets, he gets the win. And then at the end, he goes out and he fucks up this wreath. And he picks up the, the note first, spins it around. It says, rest in peace from The Undertaker. And then he fucks the wreath up and says... Taker, you know where to find me, boy. And just walks off. And my thing is, why at SummerSlam, because we'll get into that report like right after this, mm-hmm. why is The Undertaker having a match with Giant Gonzalez again when it should be Mr. Hughes and The Undertaker? Yeah, I don't understand that. They were trying to do something with George. They had him on contract for a year, so they were like, fuck, what do we do with this guy? And this, is, I think, was the last-ditch effort of being like, okay, let's see if this like, fucking like you thing had, works. Like, the Reese coming out, it sh- like, the ne- next one should have been... It like, should have oh, been Mr. Hughes. Mr. Hughes needed this push. Yeah, it definitely should have. Like, they could have went somewhere with this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And then and Undertaker then- joins this whole... Pro USA foreign thing. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 fucking odd. I don't understand it. And then it cuts to Vince and Bobby, and he says that we're taking a look at Mom again. My God, say the fucking name, no. Vince. No, Mom. Say the fucking name. God damn it. It's not even the right initials. It would be yeah. like Mom. <laughs> right. Not right. Mom. Yeah, it's fucking Moam. Moam. And the fucking. Well, you always <laughs> take the single or A out. Yeah, you, you, take, you, take the sing, you take the single A out for sure. <laughs> so, but, Mom then, would be better instead of Mom. Right. Absolutely. God. And he says, Bobby says, no, no, no. These are men who eat and live at a mission. Fuck you, Bobby. <laughs> you piece of fucking garbage. God. It's damn. more fucked up because this one is the only one who's actually big. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, I mean, Mo's like, kind of a big dude by comparison to most of the people on the roster. But, like, Mabel's the only one who's fucking, like, Yoko big. Like yeah. him, Yoko, and Bam Bam are like the three big dudes. Well, and yeah. that big smelly fat fuck that we'll see oh, later. Shit. <laughs> yeah. I'm slowly getting more and more grossed breed? out. I don't like it. It's gross. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> oh, it, it, it gets worse, too. It, oh, it, God. It, it, it's, it's just warming up. Let him cook. <laughs> Literally. You Literally. see that, man eats? literally it's fucked (laughs) it's very fucked and then up next we get scott amati versus adam bomb johnny polo coming out looking like a ass whoop oh dude this Mm -hmm. was a mugging johnny polo coming out though looking like a million bucks that fucking plaid suit with the shorts and the fucking badminton racket scotty can pull anything he does off and I, I love respect it. it. I love it. I love it. It was so good. He came. He came out, and the minute I saw him, I was just like, "Yep, I'm a fucking fuck a Paul Heyman guy shirt. I want an I'm a Johnny Polo guy shirt. <laughs> I want to get that shirt made." And then that would be a great merchandise plug. 
I want to get one made and then go to a meet and greet and meet Raven. <laughs> Be like, brother, <laughs> brother. <laughs> you want one? I got an extra one in your size, my guy. <laughs> Oh, that would be amazing. <laughs> I bet he would fucking pop. He'd be like, ah, that's awesome. Just go to Philly to an MOW taping. Yeah, yeah, just go to Philly. But yeah, the whole entire time during this match, fucking Savage and Bobby Heenan are about to fucking fight. I yeah. love it. I couldn't even pay attention to the match because I was just cracking up at fucking Savage and Bobby. It wasn't even a match. Just we. He got his butt kicked. It was not. It <laughs> yeah, was ugly. Dude. This poor bastard didn't stand a chance, dude. I felt bad for this guy. He just gets fucking worked. And Adam Bomb wins with that Adam Smasher power bomb. It looks fucking killer. It so looks good. So, it looks so good. Like the way he hits that is just fucking so so dope. Now we got episode three. It started out with that Lex Luger speaking at a pa I put speaking at a patriotic event. I thought God. he was like at some fucking school. Like I don't know what he did. Something. I don't know where he was, but God, this these corny ass freaking Lex Luger Lex Express promos. These fucking weirdo fucking campaign trail fucking oh lex God. montage I think, I think hold up hold up when was the election there was one in 92 are they mocking presidential elections oh they're 100 percent mocking presidential mm -hmm. elections mm -hmm. and just because i think clinton it's true because i think clinton got elected in 92 or 93 Clinton went into office in January '93. Yeah, yeah. So they've got to be making fun of that. Oh, yeah, they're, they're, <laughs> oh, absolutely. They're they're tearing apart fucking politics because Vince is about to be going on trial soon. Within the next year or so. In the next few months, I think that happens in like October of '93. Yeah, it happens at the end of this year. Yeah, yeah, and then. Kickoff match is one of the best oh, Raw so matches good. in this year, hands down. Sean Marty Icy title. It was title. too good. It was. It was a long good. ass yeah, no, match, this... but god damn it, I I barely took notes because I was just like, this is fucking sick. I I popped the oh, first wait. time when Marty like when we thought he won, and yeah. then when it went to commercial and back and like. They reversed it. Like, yeah, I did too. I was like, no fucking way. And then it comes back and it's like started again. I was like, ah, shit. Yeah, thanks to Bobby. But dude, yeah. at the very beginning of the match, the backdrop reversal where Marty completely flips over and lands on his feet. I was like, holy shit. That was fucking wild. Oh, so We've good. said it. I've said it before, but this proves if Marty Giannetti would have kept his head on straight. He would have been world champion. One of the best in the world. Yeah. He may not have been the best promo, but God damn, he was good. He was so he good. work on the promos, especially later. I mean, they just scripted everything. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, like being in a tag team for so many years, you learn every idiosyncrasy that the other person does. Hmm. So this just proves that if a great tag team splits up, and they feud, they're gonna put out fucking gold 99% of the time. And this match went yes. too fucking crazy mm -hmm. to be a free, free fucking match. And to be the first match on the show. Mm -hmm. To open That's, the show. It was half of the fucking that show. The end. It was half of the fucking length of the show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they could have. That is true. They actually did take most of the time off. Yeah. Yeah, they could have just stockpiled all the other bullshit at the beginning. Because, I mean, and, pretty much it was two matches, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was, like, two matches and some, like, promo stuff. Yeah. But, yeah, it was, uh, this fucking match. Good lord. It was three matches. Was, yeah, there was three. Mm. Yeah. Out. The, end, the ending was a, a little weird when it 
Because, like, well, the false finish. Marty hits the DDT. One, two. Sean's foot's on the rope. Three. Crowd fucking pops. And Diesel's <laughs> like, fuck you. Nope, nope, nope. Foot on the rope. Foot on the rope. And then on the break, they, they explain that Diesel took Earl Hebner over to Bobby Heenan. Mm -hmm. They played the replay. And showed that Sean did, in fact, get his foot on the ropes. No no shenanigans. Actually got his foot on the rope. So they restarted the match, and then it comes back from the commercial. They go back to it. Sean, at one point, falls into the ropes. Does the gimmick where he gets his arms stuck. Marty knocks him out with an uppercut. Frees himself from the ropes. Runs. He's going to do that splash gimmick where they fucking both flip over the ropes. Thank God it didn't happen. Sean ducks. Marty goes over. And he eats all of the shit when he falls. It is a thud. Like, loud thud. And he's shit-canned out. Sean distracts the ref. Diesel, you think he's going to attack him. Doesn't attack him. Just pushes him under the bottom rope. Sean falls on him. Oh, not like this. Not like this. One, two, three. Sean retains. We've said it multiple times. This should have been a pay-per-view match. Mm -hmm. This should have been for SummerSlam. This should have fucking yeah. headlined SummerSlam. Mm -hmm. Because it was yes. fucking too good. Too good. This match also... Pro wrestling mullets are some of the greatest mullets in the world because there's a yes, lot sir. of there's mullet lot. action in this match happening. Yes, sir. Yeah. Diesel got one. And Diesel got one. Sean got one. Marty got one. The style. Everybody's got it. That's the brother. Diesel's haircut. jacket is so fire. Dude, I want one. I, I, I will never be able to wear it in public because it will not go with any fucking thing that I own. But God damn it, I want that jacket. That motherfucker will hang right there. Right <laughs> above my fucking amps. And then we go to commercial, it comes back, and it's Savage and Bobby doing promos for their shows. Yeah. But it's like, my fucking show's better. No, god damn it, my fucking show's better. And, just, and it's like, if you watch mine, I'll watch yours. Or... Yeah. <laughs> you watch me, I watch you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't have a co-host on mine. I got a little bald gopher named Mean Gene Oak. <laughs> yeah, well, what was with the straight of Mean Gene? That was like, damn. Well, because Mean Gene's constantly hitting everybody with strays, dude. Fight fire or fire, brother. <laughs> Touche. You're, All you're not wrong there. All fair, dude. It kind of goes with that... Uh, the 50 Cent video that we quoted multiple times yesterday during the watch along. <laughs> What's he say fuck me for? <laughs> I think fuck I missed me. that. <laughs> oh, oh fucking, yeah. Dude, I got fucking, I got <laughs> I fucking ask. lit up. I got lit up by your fucking kid. Your, your daughter lit me up. I know. <laughs> <laughs> What's she say That's fuck me for? <laughs> yeah, that's what that was said because she... The middle finger. Was oh, because I said I think I said something about Austin Theory. Or some no, shit. John said uh, yeah. about Taylor Swift. He was oh yeah, Taylor that's Swift. right. Yeah, that's right. We're talking then, about Taylor Swift. Uh, she yeah. came out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like. Look, I'm not a fan of Taylor Swift. I ain't talking shit about her though. I'm respecting the hustle. <laughs> At the time, yeah, I'm like, I think, yeah, I think the middle, don't do that, but it's funny. You, you I said, think the that, middle that, finger was. I think the middle finger was towards John. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Make I'm, it hoping, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping so. <laughs> because that it. middle finger was amazing. Your kids are like three of my Hilarious. favorites. Incredible. Because they have no filter and it's amazing. It's amazing. Mm. Uh, then after Bobby and Savage are fucking arguing, we get Vince McMahon in the ring. He brings out money. Do we have to talk about this boring ass promo? <laughs> It happened. IRS made me fall asleep. Oh yeah, dude. I yeah. I had to watch it twice because I kept fucking zoning out. Mm. It starts out Ted DiBiase just counting a stack of cash. Well, Mr. DiBiase, it looks like you're counting your money. It's my favorite pastime. 
keeps counting his money. Then IRS says words. Something about how <laughs> all these tax cheats out here want to let you know that we're getting our rematch and the Steiners won't be paid off the paying off the refs and they're going to leave here just like how they came in here. A bunch of losers. Fuck you, you boring fuck. <laughs> Good God. That's another one of those. I had a fucking birthday watching this. Because, good God, it's... And then it cuts over. It's like, speaking of losers, then Ted takes over. It's like, thank God, something interesting is about to come out of somebody's mouth. <laughs> and he talks about how Razor Ramon's a loser because he let the one, two, three kid beat him. And then finally Razor comes out because he's like, fuck this, I've had enough. And this is the All start right, of the so Razor I have to say something. say something. Razor gets in the ring, and Vince is like, why are you here? That's like, he's been talking shit for two minutes. Of course he's going to show up. Why the fuck do you think he's here? <laughs> hey, man, I mean, you know where catering is? <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> Come on, dude. What the fuck do you I think he's I was like, Vince, really? <laughs> hey, Vince, can we push my match back? I can't find my gear bag. What the Fuck, man. What do you think he's there for? Yeah. <laughs> and then he, he do, Razor does my favorite trope in the whole character. Okay. Rich man and tax man. <laughs> Never calls them by their actual name. <laughs> Let me get this right. I work for you. No way. And the crowd fucking starts to lose the shit. And then Ted's like, yeah, everybody, you're saying you don't have a price. Everybody's got a price, including you. And then just slaps him with a stack of cash. And then Razor's like, fuck you, dickhead. Throws him to the ground. IRS tries to jump him. Razor throws him awesome. out of the ring. DiBiase somehow, with the quickness, is fucking shirtless. I didn't even see this happen. I'm like, how did he? <laughs> it just cuts back to him, and he is topless. I'm like, what the fuck? Where did it go? <laughs> he had he had the stripper breakaway gimmick on. Yeah. So he fucking got all that shit up. Hold my shit. Uh, hold up. And then Razor leaves. He fucks off. Ted DiBiase gets the mic and he says, I'm going to challenge the one, two, three kid because I'm going to show Razor what a real man can do. End of scene. Yeah, they should just let Ted DiBiase talk. Because mm -hmm. IRS is a boring fuck. I don't want to speak ill of Mike Rotunda, but God damn it. God damn it, man. Next, we get the debut of Men on a Mission in the ring. Against Rich Myers and some weird fucker. I couldn't, I didn't catch his name. Hey, their entrance, though, kind of Kurt. reminded me of R Truth a little bit. Yeah. 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 No, that's, uh, so weird fact. In 2002, uh, Visra had gone fired uh, from the WWE. And for a month, worked. Or NWA TNA under his own name Nelson Knight, and he was the bodyguard slash tag team partner of a one Ron the Truth Killings. Yeah, so they did team together. This was around the time that Truth was the NWA champion, right? Yes, yes. He was the bodyguard for our Truth while he was holding the title, and they built a friendship. Fun and our Truth has gun said that. Men on mission was a uh, think of the word like a like an influence for his rapping word. in the ring, mm -hmm. yeah. influence, yeah. influence, yeah, for him actually doing the rap. Fun fact: Our Truth is the only ever Black NWA World Heavyweight Champion. Wow, two time, yeah, two time, two time NWA Champion. So put some respect on my man's name. And uh, Rich Myers gets. Fucking killed with a slap. 
<laughs> I was about to say, this was just Rich Myers getting killed by... This is just men in a mission just killing Rich Myers. Mm -hmm. Like That's all he said is that men on a mission killed a man. That dude gets fucked up. So bad. Right out the gate, dude. He just gets fucking he, ran he, he literally needed to have the queen, queen singing, Mama, I killed a man. Just over and over again. <laughs> As soon as he hits the leg drop, I just want to do the fucking, uh, the, the, uh, the fucking smoked from, uh, Grand Theft Auto. Yeah. <laughs> and then the other guy gets in the ring and the, the fucking, the finish that men on a mission have, uh, has to suck. Basically, <laughs> yeah. They get the guy on the ground. Mo climbs up to the top rope and Mo's not a small man. Mabel standing in front of him. Mo just jumps onto onto Mabel's back, and they both come down on top of you. Yeah. Fuck that! I'd rather take I'd rather take a bonsai drop from Yoko than take both of you big <laughs> bastards on top of me at once. <laughs> I piss off Yoko. Yeah, I'd rather take a mad Yoko bonsai <laughs> drop where he does not catch himself <laughs> than take both of you big sons of bitches landing on me, dude. You'll see your life flash before your eyes. And then they fin they do the fucking song at the end. Oscar comes back out. They do the song at the end. And then it cuts to Mean Gene. And Mean Gene's just dancing his ass yeah. off, dude. I fucking Dancing Mean like, Gene is always fun. Get you some, Mean Gene. And then he realizes the camera's on. He's like, oh, shit. It's the SummerSlam report. Because he said uh, they announced... Brett versus Jerry Lawler. Yes, right. Brett J. R. at <laughs> Oh, we get the next episode. We get to talk about fucking Bree's favorite month. Oh God, the rest rest in peace match. The stipulate they didn't even say the stipulation. It was just a rest in peace match. I think it's like freaking. Uh, it's a casket match. Cas uh -huh. Yeah, I think it's a casket match. That I don't sense. remember off the top of my head, but I'm pretty sure it's a casket match. Mm. Casket or buried alive match? It's one of the two. One of the two. I don't think it's the buried alive one because the buried alive one doesn't come around until like '97. I feel like they'd have to get oh, a yeah, casket right. to fit him in it to fit that big giant in it. They they had a casket once to fit Yoko. It's true. They, they made this fucking casket. It's like three times the size of a normal casket for Yoko. It's, it yeah. takes up damn near the entire fucking entranceway. It's fucking big. Paul Bear's wheeling it out. Yes! Fucking just think, this thing is literally like... There's about this much room in between the guardrail and this fucking casket on both sides. Mm. Like They made it yeah, comically big. big. You could have fit two of Yoko in this fucking thing. Like It's huge. And then, but yeah, and then it cuts to another Lex Express montage yeah. of him. He's holding the baby. One of the times it shot it shows a shot of him holding a baby. <laughs> He's now, I didn't even put that campaign. down. He's shaking hands, kissing babies, yep. <laughs> and posing. He did his posing. Yeah, and then at the end, he's in front of the fucking Washington Monument, fucking flexing on the bus. It's like, dude, come on. Like, stop posing. You're not Terry. He's holding it up. Fuck Terry. Well, this is a fucking. It, it, he's Hogan 2.0. Literally, yeah, like he's trying to be Hogan. Fuck, we lost our American hero. Mm -hmm. Fuck, it, your your heel gimmick isn't working. Like, like throw on this American flag shit, pal. I got you a bus. <laughs> All right. And then we got the gross man. Oh wait, no, it's the and then they showed the tiptoe, uh, Tiny Tim. Tiny they Tim. Him. Dip there through the window. Oh, oh yeah, there he's coming like, up. What is happening? God, I can't. I'm like, what is happening? Why the fuck is Tiny Tim? Why? Why? I mean, no disrespect to Tiny Tim. It's just, what is the reason for this book? <laughs> there, oh, Vince was like, I need some famous names on my show. Look at the only one available is Tiny fucking Tim. <laughs> So here we fucking go, folks. Because <laughs> Tiny Tim will take any booking. He doesn't give a fuck. 
yeah, I didn't know who he was. I've you heard the song. Uh, no. So I was like, who the fuck is this dude? <laughs> yeah, Tiny Tiny Tim was big in like the 70s. Yeah, like I knew the song. I've heard the song a few times, but I was like, fuck is this little I forget mouse? Exactly, I forget exactly where he is known for, but I just know he was a thing in the 70s. And he had God. he got married to some lady. And it was televised, and it was one of the most viewed things in television history at that point. I can't. That's you need to find this. I didn't. I, I'm Ooh. I'm a terrible journalist. I didn't do any research for that. <laughs> I just know, I'm just giving you the base amount of knowledge that I know. <laughs> God, who would marry that mouse sounding? It was actually I'm gonna be nice. I can't be disrespectful. Well, to this well kid. the thing is that's just his singing voice because you hear his voice regular and he just just talks like a normal person. Really? Yeah, in the King's Court thing. I think I found oh, it yeah, on uh, Johnny Carson. I'm gonna send it yeah, to you. Guys. Yeah, it was on yeah, it was on Johnny Carson. Yeah, I'm gonna send it. Carson. I found it. You heard on Johnny Carson? Oh yeah. So he is he old. A, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's like I said, yeah, he was huge in the seventies. So it was like a it was a big fucking deal. But yeah, next we get Scott Dupre versus Big Fat Smelly Fucker. Oh God. They made his gear look dirty and shit. Oh, that's so gross. He didn't <laughs> wash it. He probably, he probably did not wash it. No. And they're immediately, He's like, okay, we're What's gonna that make smell? this giving 24 7. <laughs> yeah. You gotta wear the shit, pal. Just just don't take it off. This man's got the same draws on for a fucking month. Fucking nasty ass. <laughs> he doesn't even get all the way to the they fucking. It's not like ring. musty, crusty balls. Oh yeah, dude. He smells. Like, he smells like a fucking dead skunk ass. Just he smells like the inside of an ass. That's what he smells like. <laughs> and, and immediately, as soon as he's halfway down the ramp, Bobby's like, "Oh God, what's that smell?" <laughs> Immediately, this man hasn't even got to the ring yet, and you're already fucking talking that shit. <laughs> it's fucked up. <laughs> they clearly made this guy look dirty. Quick squash match, and he wins with the taint huffer. <laughs> Just fucking plops this dude's Why? shit on his fucking face. It's so gross, dude. Like, oh my god. Oh. I think it's the point. Like when he did the fryer yeah, gimmick, they're no. like, "Oh, it's hilarious." Now it's just like, oh, fucking, you're going to smell my sweaty ass. Fucking gross bastard. <laughs> and then next we get King's Court with special guest Tiny Tim. And Savage immediately goes, do I have to watch this? <laughs> like, yes, I feel the same way, Randy, because I'm really uncomfortable right now. <laughs> I, I legit was gonna message you. I wanted to message you guys like, hey, can we skip this segment? Oh, this he was did, my. This was Jerry, he called Jerry Dairy Queen though. Yeah, he did call him did. Dairy Queen, and then that prompted Jerry Lawler to Breaking smash the ukulele. the ukulele out of his hand and smash it to the ground. And <laughs> Tiny Tim sells this <laughs> shit. Like he just like like okay the Batman origin story of fucking Bruce Wayne watching his parents get killed, that's the reaction that this man gives to a ukulele getting smashed. Like he just watched everyone he knows and loves dies in front of him. He's just, ah, no, and I'm just like oh god plus ten plus ten plus ten plus ten plus ten. Please make it stop. <laughs> you plus ten this stuff. I actually watch it. Yeah, no, I watched. I start I, doing I'm, doing. I'm fucking around. I I I watched sure, most of it. Sure. Uh, I was like, I I gotta start Porno Husky then. <laughs> I watched at points. I did though because it just kept going, and I'm just like, fucking, come on, dude. We got. I want to start this here. fucking show close to one. Like Jesus Christ, I'm gonna be here all fucking day doing this. But yeah, and then next we get after fucking Tiny Tim cries on camera like the worst acting I've ever seen in my life don't want to speak ill of the dead but god damn it dude what are you doing <laughs> we get Chris Duffy versus the 123 kid 
Kid is going buck wild in the Ooh, beginning. He went of this crazy, match, dude. I was like, holy shit. Yeah. He, fucking... he had a couple energy drinks before he went out there or something. Oh yeah. He he, he had a I, bit I, of a nose I, don't know if was, I was about to say, I don't know if it was energy it, drinks or if he hit that, well, uh, we, that nose code word. candy he, or the uh, He hit a bit of a <laughs> He hit about he hit one of those. Hit some up. Or the soma did some stuff. He did. <laughs> He had the Tony Khan specials, what he had. Ah. And then, he fucking, dude, when he, he gets Chris Duffy in the corner and, like, he does, like, the one, two, and then that step up fucking sidekick to the face. That shit was nuts. Mm -hmm. I, was, I had yeah. to rewind that, like, three times. I'm like, what the fuck did he just do? Like, that was insane. He fucking Midway. put a dent in Duffy's head. Oh, yeah, dude. That man is going to be drinking his food for a few months. He dislocated that man's jaw with that kick. And then all of a sudden, Money Inc. comes down, and they sit about halfway down the rampway, and they're just watching the match. Then all of a sudden, the crowd pops. Look behind, and Razor's climbing over the railing. And he's sitting on the outside just watching Money Inc., paying attention to the match, but keeping his eye on Money mm -hmm. Inc. the entire time. And then... Kid keeps going through the match, and I have to say this: like we mentioned before, Kid has easily some of the most like innovative offense at this time, just yeah. doing doing things that no one is doing. And finally, Kid wins with the Minnesota Jam. One, two, three. He wins. He sees Money Inc. He sees Razor, and he goes "fuck this" and runs through the crowd. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I'm not I love how he doesn't anything. trust Razor. But yeah, he, he doesn't trust Razor. He doesn't trust Money Inc. either. Is it? Well, yeah, he's, he's he's like I'm not dealing I'm not dealing with any of this. I'm getting out. And then Razor, I'm just and, a rookie, y'all. He throws his toothpick yeah. at Ted. Yeah, he throws the toothpick at him. They start to fucking brawl. I loved it. Look at that. Yeah, it was great storytelling. But then the show ended with Randy holding a little Randy Junior. Where the fuck did you give Randy Savage a kid? <laughs> Where the <laughs> Randy fuck? It just, cuts back. it just cuts back and there's a close up to this kid who does not want to be in front of camera <laughs> at all. And Savage is like, oh, look, I got a fucking kid here. I'm like, macho man Jason here. I'm like, what the fuck, dude? Give that kid back. <laughs> Why? Why is this happening? <laughs> Oh my god. And then episode four starts with Doink. God and I, I wrote down everything that Doink says in this promo. Maniacal laugh. Hey, hey Macho. Not too long ago, you interfered in my match. And I'm giving you fair warning, Macho boy. You do it again. <laughs> if you do it again, it's going to be bad for you. But if you're a good macho boy, I'll give you a big surprise tonight. Maniacal laugh. By the way, <laughs> awkward line. I'm going to give you something. really awkward. <laughs> it was really fucking awkward. I mean, my first thought was, are you going to bring him a present tonight. and like with the pie and... Randy's yeah. gonna get pied in the face. Yeah, I'm like, what's he gonna do? What's what? What are we doing here? What's going on? <laughs> uh, and, so, and then it cuts to Savage at the end. It shows like the intro thing, so they're all on the outside corner. And Vince is like, "What do you think about what Doink says?" I'm no macho boy, all macho men. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, in the uh, in the balcony, we got a. Uh, Stu and Helen Hart. We have Bret Hart's parents in the crowd to watch the opening match of Bam Bam vs. Bret Hart, a rematch of the King of the Ring final. Mm. This match was awesome as much as, until... That match was great, but Bobby that saying great. that Stu and Helen are on there so they can take money from Bret again made me laugh a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, I was Bobby, like, oh, you're an shit. asshole. <laughs> Why are you shooting, brother? Stop. 
This match was awesome. Like at the begin the first half of it is fucking sick. And the whole time they're talking about Jerry Lawler being on the way to the venue. And then the most awkward segment ever. Jerry fucking Lawler comes out. You hear him over the loudspeaker. He comes out. He's walking through the balcony. And he finds Stu and Helen Hart. And then he just talks the entire fucking match. Ugh. He, you hear Stu. And he starts talking and... Barely. Barely. <laughs> Stu didn't know what was going can you, on. Can you what? mumble any louder, sir? That popped me. That first one. He said, like, can you mumble any louder? Stu had no idea what was going on. Stu is not there in the head at this point. Dude, he was like pushing 80 at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He was... He had no clue where he was, and Helen was... Like, I think he died away. shortly... It's in a well, no, because he's at uh, he's at the Survivor Series thing when mm -hmm. Owen turns. Yeah, when, when Owen I think turns he died, that's in, he dies in like two, two years. years. He died yeah. two thousand three. Oh, he died in two thousand three. Okay, yeah, he was eighty eight. Okay, he okay. hold so, he held on that long. Good for him. Yeah, yeah. like a big bucket of win for Stu Hart. Like, dude, that's crazy. I, that, no more shit talking because with the way he was in this segment, I thought. No, he lived another ten years after this, dude. He. That's he was fucking a, he was a stubborn old man wow. that wouldn't let go. Yeah. The entire time, the best. and then fucking. Hey, where where were you in the King of the Ring? Where, where were you? <laughs> All right, I know that impersonation. It's just Jim. It's just what Jim Cornette's impersonation of Stu Hart, because it's everybody's oh. impersonation of Stu Hart. Oh, you sound, Jim, you sound like it, it is Stu. It's fucked up, dude. It's fucking ridiculous. Mm. I couldn't even watch the second half of this match because Jim Jerry Lawler just kept fucking talking. I'm like, when is this fucking yeah. bit gonna it end? It wouldn't be quiet. The entire match. Yeah. And Bam Bam's even yeah. looking up like, dude, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Can I please yeah. just do this match in peace without you being a fucking carny fuck? Yeah. God. And then so, I don't even know who, did Bam Bam win? Yeah. Okay. I think so. Uh, yeah. yeah, he won. Okay, yeah, so Bam yeah, he Bam won. wins. And Bret Hart, immediately, he like fucking no-sells fucking losing. Hop yeah, the barricade, and then up books to the it. Books up to the top. Jerry Lawler sees him going. He's like, "Oh, okay," and just sneaks away. And then Brett just comes yeah. up and hugs on hugs on Helen and Stu. Thank God, because if I had to listen to fucking Jerry Lawler try and do fucking weird jokes about how fucking Stu and Helen are old and his fucking kids are failures, <laughs> it's, like, it's like shut the fuck up, dude. We get it. You have beat this horse to death. I mean, Stop. I mean. yeah. Eat shit, you carny fuck. That's all I put. I just put Jerry Lawler comes out. Eat shit, you carny oh, fuck. Oh, he pissed me off. It was just 10 minutes of this. Drew went off about that segment. Man. Before you the show started. And it was funny. It was funny. <laughs> so fucking bad, dude. Next, we get uh, one of the one of the uh, Hall of Fame jobbers here on mm. Queens Court. Ross, Ross Greenberg. Greenberg. Ross, Greenberg. <laughs> Ross Greenberg for fucking <laughs> Hall of Fame 2024 <laughs> against Mr. Hughes, and it starts out before Mr. Hughes. Ross Greenberg is just straight up just mugging the shit trying out of the to, ring girl. Trying he's just, to get him. He's he's like, what up, girl? Hey, hey. <laughs> Once I get jobbed out by this big bastard, you want to go out and tell me later? I'm trying to take you home, I'll girl. I'll give you five of, like, $20. <laughs> girl, I'm getting a 10-piece nugget. You can get four of them. I got to get the protein so I can take another ass-beating next week. 
God. And then another black wreath comes out. Again, keeping the keeping the storyline going. And the whole time Hughes is working over Greenberg. There's a chance of Taker everywhere. And Russ gets jobbed out again. Yeah. And it is what he is. tears up the black wreath. It's another it's another thing that happens with Mr. Hughes matches to us. It's just a thing that happens to us. It existed. We have to cover it. It existed. And then next we get the smoking guns versus uh Glenn Ruth and Gilberg. Hey Husky. Yo. Do you know who Glenn Ruth is? That's uh one of the headbangers. Thrasher. Thrasher, yeah, that's right. I always forget wait, their names. Wait, so the Joe Dirt wannabe was Gilberg? The Joe Dirt wannabe is Gilberg. Oh, because they never yeah. said his name. Yeah, yeah it's Dwayne. So Gil. I just put Joe yeah. Dirt wannabe. Yeah, that's yeah. That's no, that's Dwayne Gil, Gil and Thrasher. God, <laughs> future Attitude superstars just getting jobbed. The fuck out. A former tag champion and a former light heavyweight champion in this but company. Yet Taka in five years. can't hold a belt. I know. It's fucked. It's so fucked. It's, it's literally, this whole match is literally Thrasher just getting his ass kicked. Yeah. Well, they fucking, they did the revolver to him again this time, and they actually yeah. made it work, and it looked fucking sick, dude. Mm -hmm. He hits that pile driver. It, that pile driver Bart Gun hits on fucking Glenn Ruth was fucking gross. He fucking kills him with it, dude. I loved it. It was great. Solid, solid tag match. Solid TV tag match. Uh, yeah. Can't nothing really to argue about, in my opinion. The guns fucking yeah. did a great job. And now we get the very first promo package for Ludwig Borga. Mm. God. Finnish UFC boy Ludwig Borga. This guy sucks. <laughs> I just put. He doesn't Ludwig last Borga for the company. No, oh. not at all. I just put Ludwig Borga promo. This guy sucks. Like, <laughs> it's like just this promo is just weird. It's just clips of him from superstars just throwing around jobbers. He is, he is. His real name's Tony Howe. And this man has got. Oh. Oh. Lost Mike. Uh oh. Oh. That that shot of him though. Oh shit. <laughs> there he is. Oh, there he is. Okay. Back with this shot, that freeze frame shot. <laughs> oh, it froze again. I think. Oh yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. What I love that how was. Justin doesn't edit. I love how Justin doesn't edit these, so that's just staying in. <laughs> so beautiful. So, WWE wrestler, wrestler turned. He did like three fights in the UFC. Got his ass kicked in every single one of those. Went back to Finland. Was a on their like top writers thing. He was a politician, an author. And then he did, he had like a CD out in Finnish. You, you say? I, I knew and he then did he did some jail time. Uh, mm. I knew about the jail time and the politics. I didn't know that he put out an album. Yeah. I, I need to, yeah. I need to find this album. <laughs> and, and then, then died, in died in 2010. Oh, yeah, yeah. R.I.P. Ludwig Borga. Well, but, so far. So oh, mm. yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. And then we get this Luger promo with Vince. Ugh. Where Ugh. it happened. Luger completely <laughs> contradicts himself to his actions at King of the Ring because that's there's a stipulate. The stipulation is that Luger has to wear the arm pad over his forearm, and he says. Yeah, I don't yeah. care about having to wear that. I just want the match, motherfucker. Like just, last just month, 
You threw a goddamn fit because you had to wear one. Now it's cool. That's where my issue was with the whole no story arc with this heel baby face turn. It's just like, hold up. And then when during the slam during the, the Yokozuna slam situation, he hits him with it and everyone pops because it's against a Japanese man. But when he was doing it as a heel, it was bad. Fuck you, brother. That's that's why. That's why. Fuck you, brother. That's exactly why. God, I can't stand it. Yeah. And Vince wants to know more and more about Luger. And Luger says, I'm an open book. You can ask me anything. Yada, 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 yada. Vince is like, mm, give me some. Give me some. Blah, 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 blah. Fucking shit. Can we clip that? Fuck. I told you I'm, I'm giving shit to clip, brother. I'm giving shit to clip. <laughs> and then finally we get Doink and Phil Apollo. That Bourne is so good. He's really fucking good in the ring. He's so good. And then they even put it over. They're like, even even though he looks weird, he's a fantastic technical wrestler. And even Bobby Heenan will agree. He's like, you can't argue with that. So yeah, Doink wins, beats up on Phil Apollo, and guys, what happens at the end here? Well, See, Triple S- Doink. He calls out Randy. Yeah, he calls out Savage. And then there's and, three Doinks. Yeah, how about the three, three Doinks? One <laughs> on one, but you won't be seeing one. You'll be seeing Triple two. Three doinks. Mind games are being played here. So, yeah, we're getting sad. Mind games first. wasn't even pay per view from 96. Right. They're, they're, they're long term booking with the whole mind games concept. So, yeah, eventually we are going to get Randy Savage versus Doink the Clown. Woo! Should be a good one because Savage is one of the greatest of all time, and Matt Bourne so is a hell of a worker. So, very excited. And that wraps up July. Yeah. Well, and they mentioned too, I put ends with the WrestleMania soundtrack. So I did not know WrestleManias had soundtracks. Yeah they they did they did some uh, a couple of albums like that back in the day. Yeah, they had WWE. I think they some... they just called that WrestleMania, but it was just like one of their weird like CDs that mm. they would pop out. Yeah, they just had like a bunch of like the random music that they use in like bumpers for the shows and like theme songs yeah. for the shows and, and a few of the entrance songs. Yeah, because in a few years they started doing WWF the music and they yeah put, like yeah. wrestlers theme songs on compilations. On CDs. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, so next up we have August of 93. And then following that, we have SummerSlam 93. And we will have a special guest for SummerSlam 93. We will tell you when the time comes. But yeah, so what are your guys' thoughts on July as a whole? It wasn't bad. bad it was, but it wasn't like... It wasn't, like, it wasn't all like the greatest... I've ever seen. Yeah, it, yeah, it had some great moments. moments. Yeah, mm-hmm. like the Marty, Marty and Sean. I need more of that. Marty and Sean's yeah. great. The first half of Brett Bam Bam was good. Yeah, Sean Walman going off. Yeah, yeah, multiple times. Yeah. One, two, three, kid, just fucking showing everybody what he can do. Mm-hmm. It's fucking awesome. So good. But yeah, the first couple of weeks were a trudge to get through with yeah. just the uber patriotism thing just yeah. it down our necks all right guys so that wraps up our latest edition of queen's court from july of 93 but on behalf of the tribal queen my duplasses and husky roads thank you guys for watching hit the like and subscribe button uh down wherever it's gonna be 
subscribe to World Championship Wreckage and check out all the other cool shit that we have. And yeah, we'll see you guys next time.